Okay, uh, okay, uh, Professor Sandoval, uh, welcome to Solasi SBHCI 2023 Congress in Rio de Janeiro. We already see you. We don't hear you, but can you hear us? Okay, now we start to hear you. Uh, we just uh, moving from a, a wonderful case in room one with Professor Saraja. So now we want to discuss this uh, second uh, case with you. I have uh, the privilege to co-moderate this session with uh, this case with Professor Goran Stankovic from Serbia, who is here with us, and, and a panel of, of, of specialists in a full room uh, in our main arena. So uh, if you want to introduce your team and start the case. Let me first introduce uh, our, our, our team, team here. Here, uh, here, here to, to my right, right uh, is my, my colleague, uh, the Rico Spurt, one of our complex operators here in the Apple's heart. Behind me, uh, uh, Dr. Kapahante, who was with you in the previous case, who will be discussing with us the user CP guide of CI, Steve, John, and Chase are our chat center, and then there's SCP on the back over there. We have a wonderful team and a lot of support from our partners. From, uh, uh, from, uh, from Pathworks and, and, uh, as well as uh, as Boston, Boston and, and Arthur that are here with us today as well. So we'll start with this is a case. Can we see the slides, please? Uh, that, that <laughs> that has served the app, no significant value to see some map that she has, and otherwise no memory, no function. Next, please. I'll have to come up here behind me and take over. Perfect. Thank you so much, Darian. Great to see everyone again and be part of this. So as you can see on this coronary CT, what I'm doing here is I segmented out the coronary vessels and we are going with that blue dot. We're going to take a look at this slide a couple of times. I'm going to be navigating down from the left main into the LED. Let's take a look one more time. So here I come now from the left main. It's going to come, come down, down and we go back one slide back, back again, please. There, there are two lesions in the LAD, one that is toxin. There you go. go. So, so I'm going to go from the left main. main. There you go. Thank you. So we're going to go, go down and take a look at, at the left main. There you go. Calcified lesion there, there that, that it's becoming about 70%, 70 or so, so the best is the second, second diagonal. And then and the severe lesion, lesion, which is just long, about 10, 10 centimeters or so, 10 millimeters or so, so, on, on the, the second, second part of the mid LED. LED. So the 10 millimeters is proximal, that one calcified, and the other one after a large second diagonal branch. branch. Next, Next slide, slide, please. There you there go. go. So, so what we can see here is on the top left, I segmented these two. There's a proximal LED lesion, which is calcified, which is about 100%, 180 degrees of the arc. The calcification thickness is about 1.5 millimeters, and the length of the calcified segment is about 50 millimeters. The second LED lesion, it's, it's about 270, some, some areas is a little bit nebulous. It's so hard to say it's at least 180. It could go up to 70. The calcification is about 10 millimeters in length, and the thickness is a little, a little bit less, about one millimeter. Next. Now, now looking, looking at the plaque characteristics, this is a research tool software that's looking at the quality of the vessel. So in green, you see the blue, the, the, the vessel lumen, and you see two other types of plaque. The uh, uh, red plaque that you can barely see is just, just the pericornary attenuation fat. fat. And then blue is the necrotic uh, fat, fat, the hydrotic fat. fat. And then in yellow, yellow is the calcified. So, so what I'm showing, showing there in the proximal LED, LED is that same calcification again, 50%. And on the middle LED, LED which is about 50-70% of that calcified lesion, in addition to non-calcified plaque. Next. 
Now it, now it comes, comes to the CTFFR. CTFFR is something that in the presence of intermediate or significant lesions, we have been using pretty much upstream with our patients. They're symptomatic, we need to identify and to confirm whether what we see radiographically matches obviously to be hemodynamically significant. As you can see um, on the proximal lesion, um, before, before the bifurcation to a large second diagonal, the FFR is 0.86. There's already a pressure drop, by, as you can see, colorful, colorful from the dark blue into a bright green. green. And then and obviously, obviously that's, that's more significant lesion on the, the ostium of the mid LED right after the, the takeoff of the diagonal. The diagonal of the second diagonal has a FFR very distal to width of about 0.7. In our lab, there, there is a distal lesion and a PTA as well, a 0.6, as you can, you can see there. there. Uh, uh, what we consider to be hemodynamically significant here is typically below 0.75. 0.8 to 0.75 is typically in the gray zone, but 0.75 on the CFFR is typically what we consider to be lesion specific for that particular vessel. Next, and then uh, now comes, comes the other to see, see how we can take this now to the planning of this PCI. Perfect, thank you. Uh, so, yes, this is a, uh, you know, um, you know, we're, we're privileged to work with colleagues like, like, you know, Joao, uh, John Lesser, uh, Victor Chang, and others from our imaging department that have really, uh, uh, you know, provided a tremendous partnership to integrate CT into our uh, practice to guide PCI, PCI. Uh, and, and, and we're doing, doing more of this. this. Uh, here is uh, an example of the good, pretty, pretty much do sort of like a virtual pullback, if, uh, if you want to say to that regard, it was just, just so you can demonstrate well, how the uh, FFR to see results go across the LED and how there's a significant delta FFR decrease there from 0.86 to 0.53 in the middle of there is some plaque in the lesion in the osteobiagon. We'll talk about, about that more. Um, and of course, the question is, is that significant or not? Particularly because you can see just this to that diagonal, the results are more than 0.75, sort of like uh, you know, gray zone area uh, for, for FFRCT. And I want to really point, uh, bring to your attention the more proximal element of the lesion. As you can see, there's a middle area lesion. Proximal to that is the green part that has a little bit of padding. And more proximal to that, it is not a lesion. So, uh, next, please. So this, this is how we can use this tool, tool like, uh, uh, in a very uh, 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 novel, novel approach to uh, uh, really plan the whole procedure uh, uh, even before the patient comes to the lab. lab. And that's and how we identify, for example, this case uh, that we're sharing with you today. Uh, so, so using uh, the, um, it's called the Hartful Pan, it's a FDA clear tool, which is something that we're using clinically in our practice. It's uh, technically speaking, it's a non-invasive real-time virtual model corner intervention. And as you can see, we can use this to try to get a sense of uh, how, how should you treat uh, lesions and, and really pretty much plan on the CI. So, so on the left, left if you treat just the middle of the lesion, uh, uh, let's say here, for example, with a 26 millimeter stand, but just the, the concept of if you treat the middle of the lesion, uh, Post is post virtual FFR would be insufficient. It would be have significant residual ischemia, as you can see with the predicted FFR of 0.68. So that's telling us even beforehand that we may want to cover more of that LMD Now to the right, you see that if we uh, again the virtual plan that if we cover both lesions, the middle LMD and the proximal LMD that we end up with more favorable uh, FFR uh, CT uh, yeah, of 0 0.89, 0 0.88. And this was the point of the discussion that we'll be very interested in what, what uh, all the colleagues in the panel uh, have to think. Because part of the question is, what is the acceptable residual threshold and what is our target FFR post GI? Next, please. This, this is, is the, um, this is the, uh, uh, now the plan I virtually, if, if we want to do a two technique potentially, again, it depends whether we identify the diagonal lesion, but as you can see here, we can do a total two stent technique if we desire, which if we wanted to do, we'd be like about 15 degrees. Next, please. So, so to wrap, wrap this up, up 
are this is our pre-procedure for that, even before, before the patient comes here, here is to think about an LA diagonal by bifurcation, heavily classified LA lesions as a couple of countries demonstrate to plan and direct them, our angle uh, AP cranial or aerial cranial, uh, our length needs to be at least covered in the proximal and middle AP lesion, and we're targeting a delta that far uh, that will be a significant improvement of at least 0.39.4 if we cover the LA lesion. So this is what we've done so far. Uh, maybe we'll go back to um, uh, actually, John, do you want to speak about the validation of this before we go? Yeah, there, there is a one next slide if we could go. So, so how did we come up with this post FFR CT values, right? right? So, so this is the P3 I studied study that was led by Carlos Blatt. I will support, support the heart flow uh, uh, group from Poor House in Belgium. They looked at 120 patients, patients which they did um, modernized pullback post PCI. You can see on the middle image there. And that has a very high correlation with the post PCI plan. And matching Imagine all of these segments, segments one by one by one, they, were, they found a difference of 0 0.01, which is almost virtually the same. same. Next slide. Next slide. What, what we're, we're trying, trying to get, get into, into now, and this, this is just the prelude to, uh, we use the heart flow planner, planner but we will also want to be part of the P4 study, study that is led by Carlos Collette as well. And we, we have three sites in the US, one of us is us, trying to leverage the information from the CT as a PCI guiding planner compared to uh, IBIS guidance. So, so the idea, idea is that CT plan would be non inferior to the IBIS guided PCIs, which are about outcomes. them. We're, We're talking, talking about cardiac death, death cardiac death, and myocardial infarction. Next, next slide. slide. And, and this, this is, is the randomized 1,000 patients, one to one. Randomized, and they already have a goal of about 150 patients in Europe and in Japan as well. Next slide. And, and the, the whole package, package that we will be getting from that, that is something that we're trying to build because we don't have the activation, activation from our side. You look at the calcification of the vessel, the distribution of calcium, the, the angle takeoff, the type of catheter, the type of plaque that we have shown to you before, as well as the myocardial mass that that vessel subtends, as well as the post PCI FFRCT. Thank you. Professor, so could you go maybe update you guys about what we've been doing uh, so, in the meantime? Yeah, just to make a comment. So, Gohan, we have seen a very detailed uh, uh, angel CT analysis. How do you see the role for bifurcation planning on this? Yeah, uh, we are actually following this from ALST and we work also with Carlos Cole and Bernard De Bruyne. It's really impressive to know non-invasively before you do angio, you actually know plug composition, plug distribution, and you can even do virtual planning of PCI. How that will impact the real practice, we need to see. Uh, th there is one question that I have. Uh, fractional myocardial mass of every side branch probably can be determined as well. So you can know in advance if that is clinically relevant side branch su supplying with blood more than 10% of myocardium. Since here are two diagonals, I guess this one is... Uh, large enough to do it. And regarding the uh, strategy, I absolutely agree with you that uh, uh, a single stand as initial strategy should be uh, uh, our task. And after that, we probably open strats towards diagonal if necessary. We don't need to decide in advance how many stands we need. We definitely know this is 011 bifurcation and the tightest lesion is actually distal LAD part. So preparation, you can also plan, I don't know, I, I, we need to see angio, but IVL versus rota versus uh, non-compliant balloon or cutting, uh, this is also possible based on your non-invasive evaluation. So congratulations, excellent tool. You know, those are just wonderful uh, insights, and I think you really hit the nail on all those remarks, because that's pretty much uh, everything that you said, it's pretty much what we've uh, been doing here so far. So let me show you the angiogram. Uh, they will start with the right, and I'll show you afterwards some of something else that we've been doing. Some people are going to speak to that right now. We're doing upfront in many of our cases, uh, at least if you're trying to do this uh, more often than not, is you know, rigging up our angiograms with minimal pan, really good loss shots, because in addition to pre procedural planning with FFR, so we're also doing angio FFR, uh, which I find it very valuable to sort of like emerge both tools, because I'm, if I'm using the hard tool to plan my procedure, then I want to know whether I achieve what I said I wanted to achieve, uh, which we can 
confirm with the FFRA at, at the end of the procedure. So this is the RCA. The RCA has a high PDA lesion there, as you can see. And this was actually uh, identified by the CT and by the FFRCT results. Right now, now, here, here is the left system. system. Uh, we are radio uh, uh, with uh, uh, EBD 375 uh, guide, seven, seven French system. system. Uh, 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 as you can see, there's some diffuse to see in the non dominant circuit. Uh, but most importantly, there is uh, a hasty uh, uh, proximal LED lesion. Um, and uh, and in, in addition, there is that tight uh, middle LED lesion, lesion uh, that, uh, that we had uh, identified in the CT and the FFR2 results. So, so and and, 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 and I, 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 I think we can potentially stop here because we'll be interested in the panel and then I'll show you what, 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 what we've done. But I think we're part of the crux of the discussion is you know, how to treat this. Uh, I think uh, when I said you, you really hit the nail uh, there with your remarks, is that uh, you know, we, while we at some point we were thinking about a two step technique, uh, I think this is really looking like something that we would probably have to treat uh, with uh, in a provisional approach. Um, and part of the discussion right now is uh, that we will probably with two, two stents, one, one to treat the middle lady and another one to treat the proximal lady. Okay, so let's start with the panel here. Uh, very fast, Rodrigo. Um, technique would apply for this lesion? Yes, congratulations for the presentation of the case. In my opinion, I, I will do a, a, a provisional approach, as you said, and I will cover the proximal and the mid portion of the LED with one stent, one, one big stent. Yeah. So, Elio, uh, the angel CT reconstruction, uh, the physiology assessment did not show a significant proximal lesion. Stenosis, would you still go for stenting proximal distal in this yeah. LED? Yeah, I, I think I put uh, the stent in, in the LID in proximal and middle and the provisional in the diagonal. Thank you. Hi, uh, Yadar. This is Mayra. So nice to see you. Oh, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm so impressed. Uh, he, and I used to work together at Mayo Clinic for years. So it's so nice to see you. Very impressive. I, I learned a lot. Thank you for sharing th this approach. My question is about the diag. Um, I share the opinion here, my colleague, that looking at the angiogram and not knowing what you know uh, regarding CT planning. The, C, the, the diagonal doesn't seem to be so involved, right? I mean, the, the, the black and the diagonal branch. Um, the, after seeing the angiogram, do you still uh, want to treat that ahead of time, or would you do just provisional yeah. provisional stenting? Yeah, that's the reason I was doing it when we were looking at the parts of the results. There's clearly some black, black as you can see here in this picture. There's definitely some muscle diagonal disease, uh, uh, but if, uh, 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 but, but that, those are the results were, you know, more close to the gray zone, and, and, and I think it's it's, it's more important like that like something that we, we can treat provisionally. I want to shift you a couple of things that we did. As I told you, we're doing the angiograms, and now we're doing uh, angiographic FFR. So if we can show the angiographic FFR results, please. Um, are you seeing those? So uh, again, uh, uh, this is. Uh, Think, think about, about this. This, this is not what we're doing in our cases. We're doing totally wireless physiology. A lot of information for both the CT before the procedure and now in the cath. So as you can see there, the FFR angle of the LAB was 0.73. And uh, Amy, you can show us the one on the diagonal. And in the diagonal, as you can see, it's 0.81. So I think that tells us that even though there's some black and in the diagonal, it's looking more like something that will potentially be discreet uh, uh, provisionally. We did uh, HD iris, as you can see, uh, switch to the iris. Uh, um, uh, for planning purposes, okay. uh, uh, maybe with a diagonal. Go ahead. Uh, so this is a diagonal, and actually, this is at the ostium of the diagonal, where you can see the area is uh, 5.6 millimeters square. So uh, you know, and there is definitely some back and some calcium, but it just doesn't look uh, as tight. And we feel that that provisional approach would be a reasonable. If you don't mind showing us the, uh, the LED piece, maybe you can just let, let that run go. Uh, just play the run. Perfect. So this is now the LED uh, HDI uh, that, that, that we were doing. Uh, and as you can see, we're here, you can see the EEL very nicely. This started from the minute LED, this was the lesion. And, and as you can see here, you start seeing some patterns or toxins more coming in the middle of the end soon here there. You start seeing uh, that severe disease is right there, almost circumferential uh, concentric precipitation. Then it goes into this academic area that also has quite a bit of calcium. 
and then uh, it opens up again, there's some sort of a healthy-ish uh, sort of segment, and then again it goes back to that hazy proximal alleviation that we previously saw uh, over there. That still comes here to very Pacific. Pacific. So, that's so that's sort of where we are right, right now. Uh, uh, our next step uh, uh, was, you know, uh, well, actually, what we've done. So, so after doing the ACI, we made all that cast, we went ahead and decided to treat this uh, uh, with an initial, uh, you know, activification strategy based on rotational lab directly. And you talked about the value, value of, of the CT to me, just by looking at the CT in July beforehand. We already knew we needed to do some other directly up front. So, so I think there's a lot of value to that. And something that I don't know, what, I'm sure you guys think in your regions as well, we have it here, is that we need to do case selection as to where this case is going. So within our healthcare system, we have some labs that are not suitable back, otherwise that are like ambulatory settings, and we have the primary site here. So I, I actually find it very valuable because we can say there's a lot of things and we want to do this here at uh, our, our, our primary site that has all the tools. So we went ahead with rotational atherectomy, one fiber, we did three passes, it went very well, um, and, and we've done an HDI after that, which is some fractures. And that's sort of where we are now, I'll show you our most recent picture. So our most recent picture, you can see the proximal area is still hazy, uh, we rewired the diagonal. And, and, and the question is, of course, now how to tackle this. Should we just keep the middle AD uh, uh, provisionally? Should we put a long stent, middle AD and proximal AD? Should we put a couple of stents? Uh, I think a preliminary discussion here before you guys joined us was to put out a potentially a couple of stents. So a smaller one in the middle AD and then a big one that goes into the proximal AD. I'd be interested in what you guys have to do today. Hi, this is Mayra again. Just a question about um, atherectomy versus lithotripsy balloon. Um, any any comments about one versus the other one for this particular case? Oh, yeah, atherectomy versus lithotripsy balloon angioplasty yeah, only. You know. Uh, I, I, I think, think uh, you know, I, I use a lot, lot of the trips, but I would say, say that, that, uh, that that in some of the, if, 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 there, if there's a balloon crossable lesion, you still have to get your IPL balloon through the lesion. So sometimes uh, um, uh, I, uh, in those in those vessels, I will say I have a lower threshold to do some sort of a therectomy without you. Uh, I, I use a lot of both orbital and rotation. Uh, I would admit that if the lesion is long, like, uh, like for example, like in this case, um, um, it's, it's very, very um, uh, uh, tempting to do rotational. Uh, I think it's something that can be a little bit more efficient in long diffuse lesions. Orbital is fine, totally fine, but you have to remember that it's like you're supposed to be going at one millimeter uh, per second. So if you have like 60 millimeters of that, it's like directly, I guess, you know, it's going to pass your patients. But, uh, but, uh, but you can do it as well. And I feel to be honest, it's very practical. Like, to your point, like here actually, we're going with IPL right now. Uh, I think the Rota 1 fiber, it's good to modify the plaque. In that in that the lesion, but uh, that, that proximal vessel is, is very big, big, and I don't know that that bird touched that. that. Maybe you want to speak to that. No, I, I, don't, I don't think that the one five bird had much impact on that large vessel, and that's why we need to use a shockwave to modify the plaque uh, to get a good stent result. So, Gohan, uh, one thing that calls attention is the, I would say, relatively high discrepancy between the distal LED, the proximal vessel, and you have a very large side branch, which is even bigger than the distal LED. In a case like this, then you need a good range of, let's say, accommodation with port and everything. Do you see difference in design of devices currently available, whether if, for this range of overexpansion, if you will, yeah. as well as access to the side branch? Uh, that's that's a really great question. Uh, this is why IWUS can help understanding the real diameters distally versus proximally and step down from proximal to distal part actually determines device that you will select. What we usually try to recommend is to select stent according to distal reference and then post dilate proximally go at least 10 millimeters proximal to diagonal in order to do proximal optimization. But in case that we have uh, a large discrepancy, in that case, we select uh, maximum uh, available diameter that can accommodate distally at a low pressure deployment. 
for example, six to eight atmospheres, and then fully deploy only proximal part if you have really excessive discrepancy in diameter. In this case, I think uh, is not the case. There is discrepancy, but because of the large si size diagonal, similar diameters, I think that according to IBUS, they, they may select the stand, post dilate proximally, and then add a larger stand uh, in the proximal LED. Um, Ricardo, I think in this case, the, there's a peculiarity that they, ha they have classification uh, exactly in the point of the side branch. So if you choice to use two stands in, in LED, maybe uh, you have to, to take care to not not put the second stands, uh, the overlap in the calcification portion, because maybe you have some difficulty to, to yeah, the Yeah, the whole length should be covered. Yes. That's why in this case, I prefer one long stand, I think so. Yeah, we will see what uh, Dr. Sandoval has decided. I don't know if you have any comments. Or no, it's uh, 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 the idea with, um, with a three eye below the proximal LED. Uh, and, uh, and, and I can tell you, uh, uh, this is look at that angle, the one that uh, 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 previous like this one. one. Uh, uh, I mean, there, there is a sort of like a, um, a segment there, there that one can consider doing a couple of stands, uh, but, but it's, it's also very practical and pragmatic as just for a long one. In some of our estimates, in some of our estimates, it was just like a 38 to cover, but in some of the other high estimates we've done, uh, it seems like you probably have two stands, uh, we would probably have two stands. Uh, what's the consensus from the panel? Is it two stands or one stand? Uh, one stand. Yeah. The, the interesting rota shock approach to to discuss fiber lesions, and we are we are we have this technology. I think one year here in Brazil, and sometimes we are uh, question about when you use rota blader and when you use shock wave. And it's interesting because uh, if you go with a, a, a terectomy in proximal LED, maybe you can you have to to to, to change your your guiding catheter to eight French. And to to make a, a, a greater burr with a 2.0, and I think it's more it's very practical the way that the guys are showing in in more distal vase with a terectomy and a grate with a, I think 4.0 uh, proximal uh, LED. You can go with a, with a shock wave to to be more effective. Yeah, because distal LED mid LED was actually circumferential, very tight lumen. So very good for superficial calcium for rota. Proximally, because of the large vessel, the lumen diameter, remaining lumen diameter is too large to use rota. So I fully agree, combine rota versus uh, IVL proximally. Yes, and for and the we can use stents one versus two, I would go for two, but uh, uh, I think uh, that both strategies uh, could be applied. So yeah, the, I think the consensus here is provisional, definitely. And what's your plan now? Uh, so, so we, we just, just finished doing the eight pulses of so the IVL and the uh, middle AD. Uh, we're gonna, gonna take a picture, picture here, and, uh, and now we're gonna go with a non-compliant balloon to the middle AD. Let's take a quick picture here uh, with a uh, uh, non-compliant balloon to make sure that we're really uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, cracking that, that middle AV lesion. lesion. Then we'll also do an MC. Uh, we could, could even do an endoscope, for example, of that proximal lesion. lesion. And I think and a couple, couple of steps, right? Yeah. yeah. Part of the problem is the length of the lesion. By uh, IVIS measurements, it gets us up to 48, and we might not be able to cover things well enough with one step. So we thought we should go with two. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. That part of the brought in responded nicely to that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So clear. Yeah, so I, I, think you, I think you all demonstrated very nicely in that CT. That, that was a lot of horrible calcium in that part of the brain. It's looking nice there. So LED is a larger vessel now. Let's restore the flow. Diameter of mid LED distal to that lesion that needs to be covered by IBUS. Uh, maybe I missed the, the diameters of the LAD based on IVUS assessment. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so for, for, the, for the LAD, it looks like a 275 vessel. This is the This is the EL. And, 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 and proximal, we were more like 4 
And what what stand diameter and length you are planning to go distally? I think here we can put the two seven five here, green end, yep. uh, and, and then a four for the for the, for the, for the proximal vessel. Uh, uh, so I I, 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 I personally like that EL based approach, and then round and down a little bit. Actually, this one, this one, six sixteen. It's interesting in this case because uh, if you will look to the, this case like an old-fashioned way, definitely we go with provisional stent and we will look what happened with the diagonal branch. But if you look to draw analysis in CT, we, we probably went with a two stent technique because it was a long uh, lesion in diagonal branch. Yeah. I think uh, the the yeah, trial that that John showed uh, can 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 answer this question. <laughs> yeah, I think properly. we have enough data that two stands up front is not good strategy. Increases long term event rate, and uh, if there is really true lesion in the side branch longer than ten millimeters, we may consider the up front two stand strategy. But again, two stand strategies are different. For us uh, in European Bifurcation Club, well, main vessel the, stenting yeah, and yeah, then yeah, teeth up or two out is regular approach. And we also respect people who do the strategy. strategy. Uh, and that's, that's something that we have been fortunate to apply and have champions to you know, work and learn together. And we're bringing all the tools and trying to use not only non invasive imaging up front, but also intravascular imaging, coronary imaging. Uh, to, to help, help us up this decision, decision and, and the strategy, strategy to the station. So, yeah, so, uh, uh, going, you're just finishing, you commenting the, the recommendations of the EBC. Oh, okay, so, maybe you want to do your final comment. Uh, for the recommendation regarding the strategy. Yes. Yeah, so strategy is based on the assessment of the risk of losing the side branch following main vessel sending. If the risk is estimated to be low, then we do crossover stenting, we do pot mandatory, and then unless there is very tight lesion, 70% or more, or diminished flow in the side branch, we don't do kissing routinely outside of the left main. If there is flow impairment in diagonal, I would do kissing, evaluate again. If I need second stent, in this case, I will do tap. Uh, okay, so you, you showed uh, really nice images from the CT. And I think this case really illustrates how calcium is still like a limitant for uh, CT, right? Uh, my question for you is if you see something, some new technologies uh, coming that will overcome this limitation of uh, the CT, of the calcium? <laughs> So would a 3 0 with low pressure yeah. be an option? So I think two seventy five and three oh are the same stand, right? It's the same design. Yeah. In most yeah. in most platforms it's the same platform, different delivery balloons. So, so, so you can both dilate to three five without problems. So what's what's the overexpansion that the Onyx for? I think it's Onyx. Is it the Onyx on two we're using? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's something that I mean, we had like to have in our rooms. You see here we have like this whole collection so of posters. What, what's the range of expansion for the Onyx from two? Yeah, you can you can go definitely to three five safely based on the recommendation, but according to bench testing, you can go to four point zero. So yeah. Yeah. But this is over expansion capacity, which is extremely okay. large because it's uh, well, dual connection. And, and we've picked a 27522. Two. Uh, okay, and we are just discussing here about the over expansion capacity of this device. And uh, Professor Stankovic was mentioning it can go easily to 3.5 to accommodate approximately even 4.0. So it's, it's a good range for this uh, type of anatomy. Yeah. And again, Ricardo, after placing 4.0 proximally, 
you can use the same balloon and post that in the call part. Yeah. 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 And it's a, that's treatable. And that's the reason it's also a good practice to keep the wire in such a thick vessel. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there. Uh, tell us what you're doing now. This issue of how to address physiology in vessels that have more proximal disease to it, right? Because it can be a little overestimated the severity of the. I don't know what you have to say about that. Yeah, it's particularly you know the overestimation that we saw with the diagonal could have been a reflection of some diffuse plaque that that vessel has, in addition to the proximal lesion. So again, the, the series lesions in series tendon lesions. There is some monster disease, disease like in the diagonal as well. Uh, there was inside the iris that, that you know, actually could, could have a glance of that, and that's where the gas leakage John, can you hear, John? This is here by any stretch of imagination. Can you hear us? We're going to have a problem with the technical sound. Can you help us, please? Yeah, it seems like there is still small waste just below diagonal, so probably they need to post dilate with NC balloon before going proximal. Jean, uh, can you hear us? I think they have problem to hear us. Yadir, can you hear us? Precisa restabelecer a conexão do som, por favor, aqui na transmissão. So it looks like they still dilating here. Clever, so one question. Uh, after we do rot ablation and or IVL, always mandatory to do a Balloon dilatation with a non compliant balloon before stenting or depends? Yes, uh, always analyze with uh, intravascular imaging. Then, uh, usually, sometimes you have a tight, tight lesion that then you, you, won't, you only will you go through this lesion with a uh, rot ablation with 1.5 or 1.25. Uh, but uh, in other case, we, we prefer to make some dilatation, then prepare the lesion uh, uh, after rotablation or before uh, shockwave balloon with tripsy. Yeah, we routinely do post dilatation, definitely. After rota or IBL, we definitely post dilate with NC because you actually crack the plaque and then you need NC to really open the vessel and prepare lesion for stenting. So for, for us, it's routine post-dilatation after any kind of rotor. Uh, yeah, there, can you hear us? Uh, Dr. Sandoval, can you hear us or, or, or we need to uh, somehow uh, tackle these technical difficulties? While, while they are fixing the, the, pro the, the problem, I would like to, to ask you, Dr. Uh, Stankovic. Uh, at the end, you, you put provisional stent, a stent main vessel, and you know, this is the a question that always is returning. Yes. What is the best strategy to analyze the, the side the side yeah. branch? Yeah. Do, do you go for intravascular imaging, physiology, yeah. angiography, uh, or uh, all these yeah. things? So for all three modalities, there are some criteria that we try to follow. Usually it's angiographic assessment since it was done in all randomized studies. And it means that more than 70% diameter stenosis or especially timid flow less than three yeah, yeah. is indication for opening, kissing, and if the result is not better, second stand. By uh, uh, FFR of the jailed side branch, we agreed, we, we wrote consensus document with Korean and 
Japanese bifurcation club, that assessment of the jail's side branch after stenting is uh, reliable. So if you have, especially in the left main osteal cell compromise, and there is this question of optimal projection that is selected, we recommend to do FFR. For the imaging, uh, it's, it's not really routinely done, but uh, you know that with OCT, uh, uh, you can really assess the uh, surface area and compromise of the branch. So angiography to be practical. Okay, I'm going this. What we see is that they put a second stand proximally, but before that, they, they remove the yeah, wire yeah, from yeah, the yeah, side branch. So, this is amazing. Old school, old school technology, technology combined. combined. Down, Down 18. 18. So we got a 40, uh, uh, OK. okay. Yeah, yeah, so, so if, if you, you could, could describe, describe what, what has been done, done so far here, then. Yeah, yeah so, 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 you know, if you went ahead and did a 275, 22 to the middle in a provisional fashion and discussed how the post I needed the actual part of that afterwards. And then we went ahead and did a 4018 uh, in the proximology that actually I'm very happy with how it, uh, uh, it expanded the data that uh, uh, led to purpose. Uh, now we're going to post dilate the proximology stent, and our, our, our next step is to do uh, angiography. Good, good. Could you hear us okay? Yes, we can hear you, and we fully agree. Excellent, excellent stepwise strategy to cover the whole segment okay. with two different devices. Five more minutes and then I'll point you to for a final hour. Hey, Andrew? We're doing a quick 409 client. So let's do this. Maybe, Maybe we, we should, should show the, uh, the, the, the energy of our pulse uh, while we're in the transmission quickly. So let's do this pulse. And, uh, so, and we'll guys, guys one do, question uh, we have yeah. recently seen at PCR, the KISS study, the, the yeah. left yeah. main, so comparing doing KISS in balloon uh, versus pot side pot. And there's no significant difference in that first end point, yeah. third base, per base, per base. And something and something that that do you think that's a, 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 a good strategy for non-left main uh, bifurcation? This, this, is, right this right was uh, exclusively for non-left main. They did not include left main. It was non-left main after proximal optimization. They randomized to no intervention versus spot side pot or kissing. It was left to operator discretion. And there is no a significant difference in the event of periprocedural MI according to ARC2 definition. Uh, this does not mean that we will not see some events up to 12 months, midterm. And of course, it's good strategy now for non-left main, but it implies proximal optimization as mandatory step. So after pot, if the result in the side branch is not severely compromised, you can stop. And I think it's a good message. Shorter procedure, less radiation, less contrast use. And this was documented in the randomized fashion. What we need now, we need keys in the left main. Invasive, uh, invasive angel FFR, FFR. FFR. Cap Cap works. Works. Yeah, they can you hear us? We can hear you now. Oh, yes. oh, great. So, 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 step. so uh, we have uh, five more minutes with you. Uh, Tell us what you did and what's going to be your wrapping up the case here. Yeah, so, so, so uh, we started the uh, middle with, with a 275 provisional fashion. fashion. Uh, uh, then, then we did, we did the approximately 4 uh, uh, that, 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 that area was heavily Pacific, but after all the packet education stand, stand stand nicely. nicely. We've we post that, that, that uh, high pressure wind for a balloon. And now we're ready to take a couple of pictures and see what Andrew and Rafar is and see whether we've made an improvement to our electric for everybody. The initial Rafar Andrew was 0.74. So, so we'll see here what that is, as, as well, well as how everything is looking. Is this fine? Okay. Good. Thanks for the picture.
Not that, that I'm going to spend, so we're going to have to convert here of uh, probably uh, off transmission, transmission to a uh, two-step technique, technique there, there, right? Like, really? Like, uh, just just blown in how it looks. How does the panel, the panel feel, feel about, about that? that? <laughs> I think it's quite shifting. Shift, shift, shift back, back with the Rodrigo, any comment? Yes, congratulations for the, the, the results. I think uh, uh, I I maintain my, my decision to 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 not 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 perform PCI in the, the left the diagonal branch, and perform an IVOS right now to see the results the expansion of the stance. But if, congratulations! I think it's in John Geographic. It's a, you have a very good result. Uh, I, I think this, this is, is one that I'm sure there will be a lot of debate. debate. I think here the angle to far of both branches is going to be very informative, particularly for the diagonal. If the angle to far of the diagonal looks like it's impaired, it's impaired particularly after initially being okay, okay, I think that it force one hand to have to go and do a sort of like a reverse to take crush. The other thing I think looks great. I think the actual direction and idea looks good. I think the question is the diagonal. So, any other comments from the panel and moderators? I think that's a great result. So, go on. What do you think? Yeah, I'm absolutely amazed with the angiographic result. I like to see physiology, of course. And I agree that at the end of procedure, if we do IVUS, in the beginning, we should definitely check the result and optimize based on imaging. So uh, I'm somehow an uh, image guy, and I really believe we will see at European Society of Cardiology Congress uh, this month, Illumium 4, October, Octavus, and meta-analysis, uh, uh, Illumium 4 and October. So we will have definite answer if we need image guidance to improve the outcome. Okay, so uh, yeah, there any any final com any final comments for you and your team before we close the session? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I guess I'm, I'm here, here from, from, from several of you. Is there anybody that would go ahead and extend the diagonal uh, 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 and, and rescue uh, them? Uh, you know, we're gonna wait for the end of the part that I would love to share with you. Uh, you know, otherwise we'll share it afterwards because that will be of, of a lot of interest. But um, but I, I think that's uh, the crux. You know, how you make the decisions here about whether you have to rescue the diagonal or not. But, but I think, uh, you know, I, I, I think, you know, uh, hopefully we're able to demonstrate that you use all these techniques, uh, you know, non invasive while there's a shallow, you know, with UTA and angio. But thank you so much for the opportunity, opportunity and, and, and great to see all of you virtually. This is great. So you're doing IVOS here? It's, that's the IVOS on the diagonal branch? Yep. This is the Okay. So let's have this final IVC. Yeah. This is so your decent transition as well. Good yeah. I think that's a very nice and important part, right? Yeah, yeah it's really ex extremely well compression of those large black blocks in the proximal LAD, symmetric expansion, large stent minimal area. I'm really happy with IVOS results. So, uh, Yarrow, thank you so much. It was really a great demonstration, elegantly, a show of images. Oh, here and, is none. Uh, congratulations no, for you and your team. Really great is. privilege to have you with us. Thank you so much. Zero ninety seven, fantastic.